if the Texans lose this game, this season is over. But if the Texans win this game, this will be the best win in the Bill O'Brien area. Cue the intro. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to 713 Houston Sportcast. It's your boy, Ruben Calavillo, and we're going to be talking about the game this Sunday. The Houston Texans taking on the Los Angeles Chargers at LA, and we're just going to go over who I think is going to win, you know, what are going to be the key factors. And for on the Chargers side, the key factors is they are just hurt, you know. Adrian Phillips is out. Hunter Henry is out. Melvin Gordon, you know, he's he's holding out, so he's still out. Darren James, Russell Kuhn, and, and um, Keenan Allen is questionable. So when I look at that, it gives me hope for this Houston Texans offense because they 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 lost half their secondary. Their big man in the middle on defense is gone. They're bringing up here from the practice squad, and and I just think it's gonna be just a bad day for the Chargers defense. But they still have players on this team. They have Joey Bosa. They have Melvin Ingram. They have all pro corner K Casey Hayward. Those guys are just absolute ballers. So I'm not gonna say it's gonna be easy for the Houston offense. But it's not going to be as as difficult. When you look at the offensive side of the Chargers, you see Phillip Rivers, who's still a top 10 quarterback. He can make all the throws. He can read any type of defense. He could just pick you apart, and it's going to be a hard day if you can't figure him out. And then you look at two running backs. I know Melvin Gordon's gone, but Austin Ecker isn't a scrub. He's leading the league in all-purpose yards with 287. And then you have Justin Jackson backup running back who's averaging about 50 yards again but he's still very elusive still can make plays all around the field so overall you know this Chargers team is not bad let's not forget the Chargers team is considered one of the best teams in the AFC some have them going to the Super Bowl and winning the Super Bowl they have them deep throwing the Patriots beating the Chiefs and if we win this game this is the best win of the Bill O'Brien era and I say that because it's, we, we we can't win big games, you know. We lost against the Patriots when Deshaun was starting week two. We lose against the Seahawks that very year. We lose against the Patriots again. Then we lose against the Eagles. And then, two weeks ago, we lost against the Saints. It seems that when there's a big game, the offense steps up. It's just the defense that just... You know, just lays an egg and is not there. Now, if we lose this game, the reason why I say this season is over is it's just like the points I just made out. You know, we've already lost one big game. If we lose another big game, there's not going to be a difference. We're not going to win any big game. And the Texans, there's a bunch of big games. The Falcons, the Chiefs, the Colts, the Panthers, even though Cam Newton's very hurt, that's still a big game. And if we don't win this Sunday, then man, this it's gonna be a it's gonna be a hard season to watch. Because we know how deadly this team could be. And they just haven't lived up to it. I don't know if it was Bill O'Brien. I don't know if it's Romeo Cornell. But something has to change. When you when you look at the Texans side of the ball, everybody's healthy. You know, your concern is the offensive line, but the offensive line has played very good. I think something that a lot of people are not talking about is that Deshaun Watson sometimes makes this offensive line look bad because one, Deshaun Watson holds on to the ball too long. We saw that last week, how he was getting sacks. A bunch of the sacks that we've gotten are not on the offense. It's because Deshaun Watson is holding the ball too long trying to make plays. I think the defense is going to be good at this game because you know, Keenan Allen's questionable. On the other side, the wide receiver, Mike Williams, is also hurt as well. So I'm pretty sure Roby and Lonnie Johnson would just have a good day against them. I'm not going to say they're going to completely shut them down, but they're going to have, you know, the better day on them. All in all, I think this game relies on one player, and that is J.J. Watt. To J.J. Watt, the time is now. You didn't show up against the Saints. You didn't show up against the Jaguars, besides that one fumble recovery. This game can erase all that. You have people doubting you, saying, is this JJ Watt? Is this what are we going to see for the rest of the season? No sacks, 
two tackles, assisted tackles. If J.J. Watt balls out this game, oh, man, we're going to win this game. Now, I had the Texans. Yes, I had the Texans winning again. I had them winning 28-21. Close game. I think the offense is going to go back to his form. And I think that J.J. Watt is going to step up and lead this defense. Merciless has been doing a great job. As much as you guys know, I love winning Merciless. I think he's going to be defensive player of the year. But it just can't be Merciless. If it's Merciless and Watt, the Chargers are going to have a problem. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think the Texans are going to win or do you think the Chargers are going to win? Also, I'm still doing that Madden 20 or 2K20 giveaway. We have to beat 100 subscribers. Guys, we're very close. We're at 42. We're almost halfway there. Um, thank you guys for continuing to viewing, viewing me. You know, um, I want to build this channel more. As always, go Texans. Let's try to go 2-1.